Hello and welcome to Living Word, growing a family that experiences every promise of God. You're listening to another life-changing word from Dr. Tom Anderson. For more information, visit our website at livingwordonline.com. I'm excited about Heart for the House because uh, it is it has been something that uh, has been deep in my heart uh, since I got born again. And so I, I thought maybe I'd start with that uh, to share just a little bit. Dr. Maureen got uh, saved through a, a little women's Bible study and one that I was supposed to tell her not to go to, but I got to her too late. And uh, she'd already been there, got born again, and uh, then uh, hauled me off to a Baptist church and listened to the word. And actually, we had been looking and searching for something anyway, had gone to many different churches. Uh, some overwhelmed by the friendliness and some overwhelmed by the lack of friendliness, uh, lack of word. We, we, we tried a lot of different things. That this turned out, and so the preacher uh, convicted my heart with the word of God, and I got born again. It's interesting that Maureen had a, you know, a kind of a wind and lightning and amazing experience in salvation. Me, I prayed the prayer, and I said, okay, now we can get on with life, and that was... But the next day, I noticed that I did think different. Uh, desires had changed. So many things had changed in my life. and So I knew that something had happened. But it hadn't happened to my mind. It had happened to my heart. Because all action in life comes out of the heart. So I knew that something had changed internal. In fact, what changed the most was I suddenly had a desire to go to church. Now, I don't know. I, I think that's kind of true probably for everyone, but we probably find ways to justify not going because the enemy comes immediately to steal the word. I know that. But something happened internal in me that I just needed to go and get to know God. I, and I, I figured the churches were you're going to at least find out more about God. And I did find a tremendous amount of knowledge through a Baptist church. It was knowledge. It wasn't necessarily understanding, but it was knowledge. And it had a great effect. I found out where most things were in the Bible. That doesn't mean I understood what they said, but I did understand locations and what learned some scripture and learned a Romans road so I could lead other people to Christ. And a lot of things began to change with there was this deep yearning and desire to go to church. Maureen will tell you that I just have to go to church on Sunday. That's what I do. And it's been that way uh, since I got born again. And I attribute the fact of where I've gotten to in my life and where Maureen's gotten to in her life and where Pastor Scott and Pastor Jason have gotten to and where their children have gotten to, to our connection and the planting in the house of God. Y'all okay? I attribute it to the word of God that's had its impact and effect on our hearts. Uh, I got born again somewhere around the 8th of November uh, 1972. Uh, I've been pretty much in church ever since. We've gone to many different churches. Uh, we have planted wherever we went. We immediately started she started children's church. Or I would start the youth ministry, and generally the children's church and youth ministry would outgrow the church, and then they'd ask us to leave. And uh, because we became too influential, we weren't. But whatever God was in us became something happened, and so sometimes the pastors would just feel threatened by it. I guess we we never had any wrong thoughts or plans. We're just trying to build the kingdom of God. That's all that was going on inside of us. And, and hanging around the Word. So then we go and find another church and start another children's church program. I believe so much of it was God's plan because he, was, he had a plan for us to be in full-time ministry. We never planned to be. We never thought, talked about it. We never thought about it. We never planned it out. We never, I never, ever dreamt of being a pastor. Ever. Never entered my head at all. I mean, it did enter my head to be another Hank Williams. But that, 
that was, God had a whole lot better plan than, than that. And so it's been in my heart. And I guess I'm sharing this because I want, I want you to grasp and be able to carry with you the value of the local church. It's never really about the comfortness of the air conditioning or the seats or the parking. It's actually not really that much about the messenger. It was never about me. I would hope that it was always about the word that came from here. That the word of God has the power to impact and change our lives and cause our lives to become better. That's God's plan. That when it's preached, the Holy Spirit then becomes the teacher and he takes that word. And I could preach on tithing and some people would say, that was the best message on love I've ever heard. Or I could preach on love and some people say, that was the best message I've ever heard on tithing. <laughs> Simply because the Holy Spirit then takes it and delivers it to your heart for what you need for yes. that day and for that week. Yes. Come on. That's how the Holy Spirit becomes the teacher. Some people misuse that, thinking, well, I can just learn from the Holy Spirit at home. No, you, you grow in faith because you hear it preached. There's no way of escaping the value of the local church for your life. There just isn't. You know, you can justify it and the devil can lie to you about all kinds of things, but you can read and study the word and you can do all of that, but it still is connected to his house. It's, he said, on this rock I'll build my church. It's this rock is his church. Come on. And the, the, the church is the tree of life, Christ Jesus. It is the word became flesh that might set us free from past, present, and future sin. Are, are you following? It is God's first fruit that he sent to us that would change our life and change us from darkness to light, to change us from emptiness to power and energy and full authority and dominion as Dr. Maureen was talking about. When you grab a hold of the word of God that, and you begin to apply it, it has authority, it has power, it has dominion over sickness, over, over poverty, it has power. When we speak it, it's, it's connected. What God said empowered that word. And then he gave it to us so that we could speak it by giving us dominion and authority to use it. That's why the word is so important in the house. Y'all okay? Yeah. And so I, I don't know if I, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about kind of what gets you in, but then there's interesting things about what gets you out. And I could testify here, going back to 35 years of Living Word Bible Church, or whatever it is, and I could name too many families. It came, got planted, served, gave, and then one day are gone. And then I could testify to what happened to their lives when they left. I'm not trying to generate any kind of fear. Please, I'm just trying to share from my heart that I, I've watched the devastation of people that leave the Word of God or leave God's house. And maybe they leave and go into another church. That's good. But so many of them don't. Why does it happen? What is it? We know it gets us in because we should have a hunger for the Word and we should experience the love of God and we should want to be around the love of God. Maybe we got healed. Maybe we got delivered. Maybe something changed in our life and it keeps drawing us back into the house. That's all God's plan. Is he, he, this is how he set the church up so we could grow and, and, and have better days because we believed his word. But then what does the enemy use? It's just interesting that immediately the enemy comes to steal the word. And how does he steal the word? What, what does he utilize to get us out of the house? Why does he work so hard to get us out of the house? 
Because when we lose dominion and authority, come on, somebody. And so I, I, I worked on this. Uh, wasn't wasn't what I planned to preach, um, but nonetheless, First Samuel chapter sixteen and verse seven says this. If they want to put that up. Um, but the Lord said to Samuel, "Do not look." I don't know if anyone, when you read scriptures like this, did you know that all of the words are important? Yes. It's kind of interesting how we'll take a scripture like this and we'll say, well, man looks at the outward and God looks at the inward. And, and we'll preach on that, and that's all good. But do you notice that it says, do not look? Don't look at his appearance or his physical stature because... I have refused it, for the Lord does not see man as man sees, for man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. This should have eradicated so many things about legalism and how short your skirt was and how long your hair is. Come on. Long, long time ago. Anybody home? But you know how we got all hung up on that, don't you? Not nobody out there, just... I didn't cut my hair. So anyway, uh, so when you, you th think about what we have a tendency to do is we look at the outward. When we look at the outward, there's a couple of things that happen to us. We are going to e do an evaluation. In fact, uh, I teach when I go out, you get 30 seconds with a, somebody new before they have already judged you. And they have evaluated and judged you. Judged you poor, rich, ugly, handsome, beautiful. All sorts of evaluations instantly in 30 seconds. And that begins to formulate immediately their long-term opinion of you. That's one of the reasons that I have in my book uh, just talking about 18 power principles, how you look. You influence people with red shoes. <laughs> sometimes positively, sometimes negatively. <laughs> and so it's really important for that outward appearance because that's what man looks at. But what God is trying to say to us, that isn't how we should evaluate. In fact, he says clearly, you will know them by their fruit. You will, and fruit is produced because we're in the house learning the word to produce fruit, good fruit. Yes. When you're outside of the house, you have a tendency to produce bad fruit, influence people in a negative way. Is anybody home? Amen. It's kind of fascinating how this principle works. So we are, and I love what. Scott, Pastor Scott and Jason have done with Living Word in the sense that it's be you. Amen. Amen. It's okay. God loves us while we're a mess. But the Word of God is what changes us, not because we come up with 57 rules and statutes and guidelines and what does the church believe? Well, it's always been Jesus saves. What else do you need? Okay, let's go. Amen. So when we look at this, just to reconfirm it, do we go to Genesis chapter 6? I'm going to try and get through this, but i got to do it in six minutes now. So Genesis chapter 6, look what it says. And the Lord God saw the wickedness of man was great on the earth, and that every intention and thought of his heart was only evil. In other words, God saw darkness. He saw 10 generations of no tree of life, of no word became flesh, of no tenth, of no tithe, of no word became flesh, no anointed Christ for 10 generations. And as a result, every thought and attitude was only evil all of the time. We can see that as soon as we pull more and more of the word of God out of our nation, the worse it gets. Can we not understand the power of the word? I mean, it's just as obvious as 
possibly could see. And it's not a fight against other religions. It's only a fight against Christianity because it's the only one that has any power. That ought to prove to you, God. Come on, somebody. I think it ought to anyway. At least it does to me. Okay, look what it says in <coughs> Hebrews chapter 4. So there again, you saw that God was only looking at thoughts and attitudes and attention to the heart. And you all know this scripture, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. <laughs> It says here, for the word of God is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of the soul and the spirit, which is really important because you are soul and spirit. And you got a lot of junk in your soul yet, but your spirit's all brand new. So there's some things that get changed by the word of God was only designed to correct, train, teach, and rebuke in the ways of righteousness, which is the soul. It's only to work on the soul. It doesn't work on the spirit. And it doesn't even work on your body. In fact, the spirit is to quicken your mortal body through the soul right. where your faith lives. So piercing even to the division of your soul and spirit and the joint and marrow, and it is the, what is it? So now God's word is discerning the thoughts and attitudes and intentions of your heart. What is God looking at? I mean, people say, well, I, you know, I've used this a thousand times, but I'll use it anyway. And that is, is I saw your, one of your elders smoking in the parking lot. I said, if you put it out on the ground, then it would make me really mad. Don't make a mess. So the, the principle of that is, is, I mean, they're shortening their own life by what they're doing because we don't have rules and regulations of that sort. Because it's the heart. Does the individual want to quit? That's what God sees. I said, that's what God sees. The desire to stop. Y'all okay? That's why he looks at the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart to see if there's light or to see if there's darkness. And the more we put the word of God in us in the house, the more light he sees. The more the word has the ability to work with because you have light and light is energy and it's power and it empowers your dominion and authority on this earth. And I don't think they got that, but it sounded really good to me. Verse 16 of Hebrews chapter 4, I just said, let us therefore come boldly before the throne of grace. Now God gave me a word when we turned the church over to the boys and uh, boys, young men, men, old men, oh, whatever they are. Okay. <laughs> God, they're getting gray. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> amen. But he said, take the word of grace and truth to the nations, my church. That's what we're out there doing. We're a missions out of Living Revival Church. And, and the church supports us and so does good things for us, allows us to use the building of television cameras and all of those sorts of things. So. We are a mission that comes, goes out of the church and reaches into the world. Now thousands of churches virtually. But the throne of grace, you see, it is grace is what we have to apply to each other when we first see you. Instead of judgment, we have to have grace and say, here's an individual that either needs Jesus Instead of going into judgment, we have to apply grace to how they look, how they talk, how they walk. Yes, yes. When you apply grace, then you just love them like they are. Yes. Come on. Then the love of God actually works. Yes. Now, I told you that I wanted to take you to, well, go to James chapter 1. And look at 13 through 15. Let's read through this quickly. Let no one say that when he's tempted, I'm tempted by God, because God doesn't tempt anybody, and there's no darkness in him. God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. Did everybody get that? But each one is tempted when he's drawn away by his own desires. Oh, wow, wouldn't that? Be? And enticed, and when that desire has conceived, that means that it got to the heart from the head. It gives birth to sin, and sin, when it's fully grown, brings forth death. Now, don't, no, here's how we, we, I've been talking about how we got into the house. This is how we get out of the house. 
Because as soon as you project a form of judgment, a form of offense, or a form of unforgiveness towards anyone in the house or the parking or the seats or the air conditioning or the sound or the... You begin to meditate on it until it develops something called desire. When you re develop desire, desire meditated on will eventually produce a passion and passion will produce action. And when it is negative, that negative will eat you up and get you out. The enemy uses it to get you to think about it. Come on. Meditate on it, and then you start talking to somebody else about it, and before very long, it produces the action, and you're out of here because you developed an attitude. Amen. Amen. That's why he judges and looks at thoughts, attitudes, and intentions. Did you hear that? That is why we have this scripture that we want to get to Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Could I have one more cough drop, please? If you have another one. I woke up with this this morning. By faith, I'm healed. Y'all okay? Okay, so, the enemy just loved for me not to preach this, you know. Because these are his tricks. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. What does it say here? Keep your heart with all diligence... For out of it spring the issues, or most judgment is an issue. Amen. So is offense. It's, it, it's an issue. It, out of the heart. So when he says, guard your heart with all diligence, the first time I read this as a young Christian, I thought that I was supposed to guard my heart from alcohol or cigarettes or... Come on, y'all. You all did the same thing. Right. We're guarding our heart from all, all of the stuff that we were told was. Now, when you guard your heart, you're guarding your heart from the stuff and the lies that the devil tells. And all of his lies are geared to get you out of the house. Come on, just... Everybody in here has gone through it one, one time or another. I, I, don't, don't lie to me because, and don't look at me religiously because I know it's true. We've all gone through, we have all gone through it. And if he can get you to meditate on something, it seems like a shortcoming in the pastor or a shortcoming in the church or a shortcoming in something or, I mean, it can be the stupidest thing ever. They have a coffee house or they have a bookstore. Oh my God, they're selling and I mean, all kinds of crazy stuff have become issues meditated on until finally a attitude is developed. And once an attitude is developed, what you've got to guard your heart. You have to go. This is why the power of grace is the message of the hour to the body of Christ, to every church in the whole world that is preaching the gospel. Because grace has the power to eradicate judgment, offense, and unforgiveness. It is the answer, and it is the truth. It is not a movement. It is where, oh, it is what God sent when he sent Jesus full of grace and truth. To eradicate all the foolish religion and all of the foolishness that goes with it. Guard your heart from judgment. Yes. Guard your heart from offense. Yes. It is what causes every divorce. Yes. It, is, it is what causes every loss of a child. It, it is the tools the enemy has used on people to destroy their lives by uprooting them out of churches and getting them to stay home. And I can name hundreds of families that have watched the devastation go on in their lives. Guard your heart from judgment. 
guard your heart from offense. This is for your marriage as well. For your children. Guard your heart from unforgiveness. Because they'll develop an attitude in you until it'll produce an action that you won't enjoy. I guarantee you will not enjoy the outcome. And instead of by guarding your heart with all diligence, all you have to do is apply grace to the situation. Len, how many in here would feel like you need grace? Amen. Then why wouldn't we lend it to others as well? Yes. Man, I've had to learn a lot about grace. Because I have been bad-mouthed by way more than you have. I've had major attacks. My responsibility is to apply grace and just say that's where they live. It's unfortunate. Pray for them. They gainfully use you. They persecute you. That's what the Bible says. Pray for them. It doesn't say I'm supposed to judge them. Come on. I'm supposed to pray for them. In fact, it says, bless them so that you might inherit a blessing. Oh, my goodness. Could you imagine that? Are you okay? Guard your heart with all diligence because the enemy would love nothing more than to uproot you. Uproot you from family. Uproot you from his house. Uproot you from... See, if he can get you uprooted, you stop producing fruit. I said, if he gets you uprooted, you stop producing fruit. Because you have no nutrition to draw on. Amen. Now, you know, I'm not, I'm not talking about... You may have been in a church that was weird. Not, those, those are the kind you need to run away from. I understand. Where the word is not, truth is not preached. I, I understand that. I'm not talking about it. But I'm talking to you about Living Word Bible Church. I'm talking about there are a lot of great churches in this valley that preach the word, preach the truth. But you need to get planted and get feeding on the word of God. And don't let the enemy uproot you and steal the word from him. If you got anything out of that, give the Lord a hand clap. I'm going to quit. Heart for the house is what God's looking for. A heart for the house is God's absolute plan. I said it this way at the end. We are the masters of our future, or our future is the master of us. Did you get that? We have the decision. We make the decision. We take authority. We guard our hearts. God doesn't guard our hearts. But the word of God will. Father, we give you praise and we give you glory. Thank you for truth today. Let it be settled in our hearts and those things that are not true. Be washed away in the precious blood of Christ. And we'll give you praise and glory for it. That we desire each one of us today to guard our hearts that the enemy can't steal the word. We will not become offended with God or with man. We will not judge God or man. We will not get into unforgiveness with God or man. We will not enter. We will always lend the power of the living grace of Christ Jesus in every circumstance, in every situation. And to someone here that's never received Jesus as Lord and Savior, I want to give you an opportunity to receive him right now. Just repeat after me. I want to ask everyone to pray this prayer. It makes it easier for them. I might be praying for the very first time. Somebody just drifted in and needs Jesus. Here's your opportunity. Pray this with us. Just repeat after me. Dear Father God, I ask you to forgive me of all of my sin. And ask you, dear Jesus, come into my life. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name. Amen.